Many thanks for your company. Now, any moment from now, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata is expected to present to Parliament a 2017 mid-year budget review. Now, today's presentation uh, is in meeting constitutional requirement uh, that obliges the sector minister to give account of the performance of the economy before the start of the second half of the year. It's generally expected that the minister uh, requests additional budgetary allocations to selected sectors of the economy deemed to have need of more funding to continue and complete projects underway. So uh, which are the areas likely to benefit from additional funding allocations? That is if that's even going to happen. Uh, let's speak to my colleague from Parliament, Joseph Opokugapo, for updates on the minister's presentation to the House. Hello, Joseph. Hello there. So tell me what exactly is the mood in Parliament and how soon should we expect the finance minister? Well, I can tell you that um, in number of other ministers, even beyond the finance minister, are present here at the moment as I speak to you. A while ago, I saw the energy minister, Boachie Jaco, walking. I've also seen the minister for Zongo um, and inner city development. Uh, 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 um, the, the, the honorable member also walking a while ago. And I've also seen the minister for lands and natural resources. In fact, we are told that the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, would be coming around himself, even as the finance minister delivers the midterm budget review. And that's supposed to be happening any moment from now. In fact, it's a very busy day in parliament today. That's not the only item on the table when the house conveys any moment from now. It's expected that even beyond dealing with the issue of the midterm budget review, there will be presentation of a number of bills, including that of the Office of the Special Prosecutor, which was withdrawn sometime last week. There will be the presentation of the bill on Zungu and inner city development, also the Northern Development Authority bill. And then as well, we would also be seeing a situation with regards to the Coastal Development Authority bill. That's also one of the key things that will be looked at today. But with the midterm budget review, let's have some conversation on that. Minority spokesperson on issues of agriculture, Eric Opoku is joining us briefly. Um, with regards to your sector, are there any major expectations as we do this budget review any moment from now here in Parliament? No, actually, we expect the minister to come out with concrete steps to dealing with this armyworm invasion, which is seriously destroying farms, a huge investment of our farmers, and has the likelihood of affecting food security in our country. You know, in recent times, the ministry has been coming out with figures, which, according to farmers on the ground, are not correct, I mean, reflective on That's the point I was driving at. The minister has the told you they've defeated the fall army worms. No, the, so the minister oh, the, the has, not, has not defeated the fall army worms. Because we met the technical team of the ministry some few days before the minister's appearance in the house. And indeed, they alluded to the fact that the battle is ongoing. Because in May, we had some 4,400 farms affected. And now we are talking about 112,000 farms affected. So if in May you had affected farms up to 1,400 uh, hectares, and now we are talking about 112,000, would you say that you have defeated the, 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 the worms? Okay. We have not. Okay. So we expect concrete steps are dealing with the situation. And this should be coming from the Agriculture Minister, not the Finance Minister, is that not the case? The Finance Minister is the one that must provide the resources to enable the Minister of Agriculture to deal with the situation. They, they provided 16 million cities already. You think that's not enough? Even the 16 million, our checks indicate that the money, all the money has not been released. And indeed, what they released was in the region of 8 million. So you see that even the ministry may be constrained in terms of resources, but probably because of political expediency, they don't want to come out clear on the matter. We all look forward to what the minister will be telling the house today. Many thanks for speaking to us. Eriko Poku is um, the minority spokesperson on agriculture. So that's his expectation. Um, we've also been having a conversation with Deputy Minority Leader, who is former chairman of Parliament Finance Committee, James Klucher Veggie. And he's also been drawing attention to a concern that we've seen revenue inflows for the first quarter of the year and even for the first half of the year drop compared to how much was expected and how much has come in. His expectation going into this mid-term budget review is that the minister will spell out concrete suggestions on how the drop in the revenue inflow will be arrested and how they would be able to ensure that that does not in any way affect the management of the economy. But uh, beyond that, there are also 
And it is expected that the motion with regards to the mid-term budget review itself will be moved, and then uh, the subsequent conversations on it will be undertaken. In fact, to quote directly from the other paper here, it says that this honorable house, there will be a motion before the House of Parliament to adopt the mid-term budget review of the budget statement and economic policy of the government of Ghana for the 2017 financial year. So we see how that goes. That may be starting any moment from now in the next 10 minutes or so after a meeting between leadership and the National Security Minister comes to an end. Well, uh, Joseph, we know that usually at uh, mid-year uh, budget reviews, a supplementary budget is presented. Uh, are we expecting that in this case? We've been asking officials of the um, finance ministry about this, and they tell us that no, um, in terms of the amounts that they requested for at the start of this particular financial year, which is in the region of 64 billion cities, which they got parliament's approval in order to spend, they are sticking within it. They are only reviewing a number of the targets. They have been dropped when it comes to inflows. Uh, they have indicated that when it comes to expenditure generally, government is taking steps to cut down on the expenditure as well. And this will ensure that they wouldn't have to need any additional funding in order you know, to undertake the activity. So officials of the uh, ministry have indicated that um, a supplementary budget wouldn't be necessary, except that with this particular presentation they'll be doing to parliament, there will be a review of some of the targets that they set out even ahead of the uh, financial year as a result of the constraints. But those on the minority side are casting doubt on that. They really don't understand how this would be possible if there is not any situation of a supplementary budget. Um, Atu Fossen, who is also the uh, minority spokesperson on finance, is, is, is around here. Um, he will be joining us in a jiffy with some additional details on that because they have been raising a number of concerns about how government has failed to meet a number of its targets ahead of uh, this particular mid-term budget review. And for them, it's a situation of they warned government ahead of this, that some of the targets were overly ambitious when it comes to revenue generation and that they won't be able to meet it. They were expecting government to have listened to them, but government didn't mean that. And so they have some very tough criticism for government on that. So we look forward to how those comments would go, even as the minister presents the mid-term budget review any moment from now. All right, thank you very much, Joseph Okoku Gakpo, giving us, on, uh, giving us some uh, information on what to expect uh, ahead of the mid-year budget review. Well, he's been telling us that the vice president is expected to be in the house and uh, he supported the energy minister and uh, the minister for Zongo and inner city development. Uh, he also says that uh, there are some other agenda for the house and that will be to uh, present the uh, um, bill for the Office of the Special Prosecutor, uh, the NADRA bill and the Inner City and Zungo Development bill. We'll take you back to Parliament when the Minister of Finance is ready to present his uh, review uh, for the budget, the mid-year budget review. We'll take you back to Parliament when that starts. Away from that, a joint military and police anti galamse tax force uh, deployment is underway at Verma Camp in Accra. 400 personnel are being deployed to mining communities in the western, central and Ashanti regions to step up efforts by government to clamp down on illegal mining. President Kufado is expected uh, to be there at the Verma Camp soon to commission both personnel and logistics for the task. Maxwell Agbaba was at Verma Camp this morning to observe the processes underway leading uh, to the deployment of the troops from both the police and military. Know that um, I mean the media did great work um, in this regard. I mean um, the minister for lands and natural resources, John Peter Mew, also did some uh, um, some good work on this. And all of these has you know have culminated in um, this deployment. But uh, the indication we are getting on the ground is that now we are going to begin the real work of clamping down on illegal mining. We, we did the talk. What we did in the past was actually the talk. Now the action is about to start. And if you come here um, to the Burma camp, you will feel that truly the action is about to start. Now, uh, the gentlemen, there's officers standing behind me are the ones who are going to be deployed. I mean, some of them are also standing on the other side um, of um, the, you know, here on the presence of the Directorate of Public Affairs here at the Burma camp. Now, all of them um, armed. If you go behind um, this 
uh, where they are standing actually we have about uh, six I've spotted about six or more um, VIP buses ready um, to take the soldiers to um, their various um, places and in fact they all came in with their bags with their luggage with everything and they put them inside you know those uh, uh, cars those VIP cars parked there now on my right hand side um, right now um, these are some of the vehicles that they'll be using during the operation and you can see carefully embossed on these white you know vehicles operation vanguard telling you that really they are not here to uh, they are not going there to actually uh, joke but to do uh, real business now on the other side also uh, we can see police hospital that's actually a police mobile uh, um, clinic belonging to the police hospital also ready um, to be deployed um, to the ground now there are also some mohawks or what we would want to call um, armored vehicles also um, carefully um, positioned there all will be deployed so if you come here right now these marquee tanks um, are carefully erected to host the dignitaries who will be coming here to uh, talk to the military men and tell them that look this is something that we are committed to do and we will need your help we will need all hands on deck to be able to fight the menace of illegal mining now earlier i was uh, privileged to hear some of the briefing uh, being given to uh, the officers uh, here on the ground in fact one of their commanders actually told them that look we are going into the bush so you're not going to wear short sleeves or anything you are all going to be your long sleeves all the time while we are staying there in the bush and you could hear them you know shouting with a lot of you know enthusiasm uh you know telling you that they're really ready uh, uh, to do this on their arms actually uh, carefully um, embossed on their arms also it's uh operation vanguard so you see um the blue uh cloth fabric right on their right arm and on it is operation vanguard so all we are going to do is to flash out the illegal miners in fact the recalcitrant you know the recalcitrant illegal miners who are refusing to leave the various sites even though i mean we've had a lot of talk about what um, the minister has done to get them out there are still indication that some of them are still on site and for those who are also thinking that okay there are no military men on site so we can still go back um to you know uh, where we used to mine their job would be to flush all of them out in fact you remember um, that we had some uh, some illegal miners actually calling the bluff of the military and also uh, saying that look uh, president Akufuado, some of us voted you into power and uh, this is what we've been doing all, all our lives and this is what we've been living on all our lives so you are robbing us of our livelihood by telling us to stop the illegal mining and some of them actually said that we are not going to stop now we have a joint uh, police and military team going to be deployed i don't think <laughs> any such thing you know would want to cross their minds and say that look we're going back to site so their job purposely uh, is to flush out all the illegal miners on site and for those who are planning to get back to their sites also they are supposed to ward them off and these um, officers here are ever ready i mean from the enthusiasm that i'm seeing here they are more than ready um, to uh, to to uh, to protect the interest of ghana and to protect our water bodies as we all want so that was some time this morning. My colleague Maxwell Agbagba is here in the studio with me. So uh, Maxwell, just uh, briefly tell us, have these uh, personnel been deployed? Well, that is, they've been deployed to their various bases and um, they've been divided into categorized into three groups. So they're going to um, the eastern region, the western region, and then the Ashanti region, because these are like, um, you know, places where illegal mining, we understand, are very rampant. I gather from the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, John Peter Mewu, that later they'll be deploying more, you know, personnel on the ground to make sure they, you know, control the menace. But, you know, speaking um, other events, the chairman for the Interministerial, you know, Committee on Illegal Mining, um, Professor Kovna Frimpombwatin, had some very strong words for some illegal miners who are calling the bluff of the tax force. He says that um, they should be ready, they are coming on the ground, and whatever that they would do to impede um, the work of um, the tax force will be met with the requisite force. So this is the warning that he is giving to them mm. that yes, they are coming on the ground and they should be very careful about some of the utterances that um, you know, they have been making. The Minister of Defense was also you know, there on the ground. He also spoke. And uh, it was more also about you know, the common denominator for all the speakers. I mean, IGP and all the top officials who were there had opportunity to talk. They urged them to be very professional in their conduct even as they go. But when need be for them to use the appropriate force, they should use all it right. when need be. Uh, um, Maxwell, I'll ask you to pause there mm. because we have uh, the IGP speaking on this uh, particular exercise by the government. The police administration has also identified threats 
to law and order resulting from the coordinated activities of the Galamseyers. Honorable Ministers, the Police Administration is of a firm conviction that the government's multi-targeted approaches to solving this menace will yield the desired results. Additionally, the Police Administration is hopeful the mining activities will be prop properly regulated to allow a sustained mining for economic development. We have on our hands the singular responsibility to stop illegal mining once and for all in our communities. Our task is to enforce the laws. We are to get the deviants who disregard our mining and environmental regulations brought to justice. Our duty is to ensure the laws that preserve the sanctity of our environment are respected and adhered to. Uh, that's the IGP, David Asante, up here today. Maxwell is still here. Maxwell, so t let's talk about logistics and yeah. how long uh, the, the, the tax force uh, is expected to be in operation. Well, Benis, uh, when we got there, I mean, what I saw was a demonstration of vehement vigor. And I mean, the military and the police force, they are really ready. Uh, we saw 13, 13 patrol vehicles. Uh, we also saw four armored vehicles, uh, two mobile clinics belonging to the police hospital, and then one ambulance, and then um, seven metro mass, you know, um, um, buses together with some VIP buses, you know, carrying the troops, um, you know, to the ground. But we understand that when need be, um, they'll be supplied with, you know, more um, logistics. We are told um, by the chairman for the Inter Ministerial Committee on Legal Mining that the soldiers are supposed to be at their various bases mm. until they are able to eradicate the menace completely. So if you're not done with your work, mm. you're not, there's no way you're coming back home and you need to you know, finish it. But let me also state that we had lots of you know, dignitaries coming through, a lot of government officials. Earlier when we got on the ground, we had indication that the president you know, was going to come. But that was not true. The president mm. was not billed to be at a function. All right. Thank you very much, Max. Well, let's now hear from Interior Minister Ambrose Derry. The Galamse problem has been clear and unwavering. Purpose, stop illegal mining. Reverse the damage for the use of present generation and generations and more. Our role as security agencies is to make sure that those processes to fix the Galamse problem are pursued in peace and security. On that, no compromise. What we expect of you, the personnel, commitment, and professionalism. That you don't abandon your obligations when you are influenced by any other person. And that professionally, you are guided by the law. Respect the rights of those you deal with. But where necessary, the law permits you to use reasonable force, which is determined by the force of your opponent. Your targets, actors, illegal miners, regardless of their nationality, Ghanaians, Nigerians, Togolese, Beninois, English, American, Chinese, Russian, among others. The only criterion, are you an illegal miner or collaborator, period. Interior Minister Ambrose Derry is speaking of a program to deploy some 400 uh, joint police and military uh, tax force to fight Galamze. Meanwhile, the Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners is restraining its members from daring government in the fight against illegal uh, and the clampdown of small scale mining. The caution by the president of the association comes just a few days after members of the Ashanti region branch vowed to return to the pit because they are duly licensed to operate. Collings are safe. Kusi, however, urged the government to train local artisans in new technology for sustainable mining operations pending a lift of the ban on uh, the small-scale mining. He was speaking at an environmental awareness exhibition mounted in Kumase by members of the Buddhist faith. Earlier in the week, the Ashanti Region branch held a press conference in Kumasi to notice its members would resume mining operations in defiance of government's ban. It came as Minister of Land and Forestry, John Peter Amewu, earlier last week, launched the Multilateral Mining Integrated Project. 
under the project, drones and other tracking devices will be deployed to monitor activities at mining sites. Mr. Osaikusi said, members must exercise patience to allow government to put in place the necessary regulatory framework for sustainable mining. Okay, uh, I heard that news. Uh, in fact, I find it unfortunate. But what I'm saying is that, you know, many of our people, they are hungry. Everybody knows that when you are hungry, you can do a lot of things. Yeah. So what I would tell my people is that everybody must uh, get uh, must exercise patient to wait. Because, as I'm telling you, we are now taking training from a uh, school of mice. What I will try to tell my people, everybody must try to take part in this training exercise so that we will know what we should actually do. So that after the training, nobody will go back and do anything wrong. So I'll Beyond that, he wants government to pay attention to training as a holistic approach to curbing the Galamse menace. They will not allow any excavator to just get up and uh, get into the bush. Before any excavator will get into the bush, they will have a track where they can track it to know the exact position that or the exact place that the excavator is, is working. And, and since then, uh, actually we haven't heard anything about it, any training about this uh, tracking system. And this six months is almost due. So what we, I will use this opportunity to, to advise the minister is that they have to see to that before the six months will come, uh, the time will come, they have to see to that everything is in order. Because Director General of Sukagakai International, do little caucus in team abuaje urge farmers and especially the youth to desist from indiscriminate chemical use to destroy the environment. My village in Asamankasi, my farmland, formerly when you go there and you want to eat, you just enter the bush, you can bring mushroom, you can bring snails, you can bring even uh, 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 it, crab and uh, uh, shrimps and uh, lobster and all those things. Now because of our pollution of the water bodies and the soils, we don't get mushroom, we don't get snails, we don't get, you know, that kind of thing. So definitely if we are able to stop nature, you see, there is a problem which is talking about, we must listen to nature. Nature is telling us, why is it I'm not giving you snails again? Because of your bad actions. So if we change, nature will change. The Master and Sumensa reporting. You're watching Joy News today with me, Benis Abubedu. Still to come, Acting General Secretary and National Youth Organizer of the New Patriotic Party state, categorically, the MPP will first consider party members for any job placement before any other person explaining it is the party members who believed and voted for the party's dream. There is no threat that if you are recruiting people, you stop recruiting your party people first. How healthy is this position to governance and development? We'll be bringing you some answers from some think tanks here on Joy News today. Please stay with us. Many thanks for staying here on Joy News today. Now, every government is expected to directly and indirectly provide jobs for as many of its citizens as possible. For this, uh, President Kufuado led government. However, the responsibility is even greater as they centered their successful election campaign on the provision of jobs. Six months after the election, Ghanaians look forward to the delivery of these promises. Acting General Secretary of the NPP, John Buedu, has however stated it will be preferable for government appointees uh, to give preference to MPP party supporters during recruitment. He was echoing similar sentiments made by the National Youth Organizer of the NPP, Samir Wuku, at the 2017 NPP Greater Accra Regional Delegates Conference. If there is any appointment, there are others that didn't believe that the MPP can deliver. 
The others, when Nana Adodankwa Okufuadu over the years was saying that there's a need for rest to have free SHS. There are others that didn't believe. So if now we are implementing it and there will be one hot meal, one hot meal per school, you want me to give the contract to an NDC person who didn't believe it? No. We will give it to somebody who believes in the program and policy so that we can deliver our objective. That's all that we are talking about. So it is, for instance, the NDC had had implemented the school feeding program for some time now. People are complaining about it. Their term of office has ended. The term has ended. So if they are recruiting different caterers, obviously, and people as we are, we even know how to cook better. You understand? So there's nothing wrong getting our people to be part of this government program, especially where our people are the ones who believe in the Kufuado species, who believe in the MPP mission. For our MPP, the issue is that not all of us can be government appointees, but it's important that whilst we support our government appointees, they must also take care of us well, well. Let's now, let's now get onto the phone line and speak to research fellow at the Institute for Democratic Governance, IDEC, uh, Dr. Kwesi Jonah. Good morning, sir. My apologies, we actually have Dr. Emmanuel Aqueta on the line. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for your time. Good afternoon. Well, let's talk about the implication of this position uh, that the MPP seems to have taken and brought into the public space. Well, first of all, I think it's an unfortunate statement um, made by uh, the Acting General Secretary. And um, I think, is it the youth, is it the organizer? The National youth organizer? youth organizer, sir, yes. National Youth Organizer. Um, I think they're failing to make a distinction between the party that is governing the country. And which, therefore, must, it must dawn on them that they are governing the entirety of the country. They are not the party that is looking for votes and therefore mobilize. They mobilize votes to come and govern the entirety of the country. And the position they've stated, although that has become the practice of the two parties, the NDC and the MPP, this is what we call political equalization and winner takes all. When you come to power, you must seek the interests of your members first. It is at the heart of the politics that is there. I, I'm coming to power to improve my lot, me first. You know, the corruption we are facing, the self-interest that politics is serving. So it is completely, you know, uh, wrong for them to always think in terms of mm -hmm. equalization. NDC did it. So we are doing it. At the moment, they offered to come and govern the country, and they got the vote. So they must govern that way, respecting everybody. And I think, pointedly, it should be, it should be said that their position goes against uh, Chapter 6, of the Constitution, uh, the political, economic, and social objectives of the Directive Principles of State Policy, which says citizens shall be treated equally. They did not say MPP first, or mm. NDC first, or MPP first, NDC second, before others. It says all citizens, so they are contravening. It's discriminatory. Mm. And I think that it this occurs because sometimes they've looked at politics only between them and NDC and vice versa. But once you govern, the president is president of Ghana. He's not president of N MPP. And you could see how he governs. That is the president of Ghana. The party that is governing with him must also see its responsibility towards the entirety of Ghana. So the whole thing that, well, people voted for us, so we should take care of them first, is part of the challenges we're facing now. Mm, that all right. People from mm. You can continue, Doc. Well, you go on. All right, uh, Doc, now, he, uh, d Mr. Buedu's argument, the acting general secretary of the party, is that uh, some of these people, uh, especially the party members, believe in the agenda of the government and worked to bring the party to power. But others would argue that believing in a government policy or, or agenda doesn't necessarily mean a foot soldier, 
party sympathizer or member. Do you agree? I disagree. Uh, that we always must make a distinction between when you're campaigning to win state power, the presidency and therefore the government, and when you win it. They have access to public resources too. The taxpayers' money that they are using for their programs have not been labeled MPP money, MPP food soldiers money, and NDC. It is the state of Ghana's resources, the public resources. So the idea that you can then get into position and step down and not take the responsibility of caring for everybody is wrong. Mm. If they are food soldiers, it depends on the promises they give to them. But what they should do is to seek to create, create a lot more opportunity for everybody. And otherwise, this kind of, I come to power to serve my people first, you know, it's polarizing the country. Mm. It is not giving us the best. Sure. If you want to give jobs, give it to the best qualified so they can grow the economy, so they can provide more effective, more efficient services to the greatest number. Come and serve everybody. Selflessly, you would also gain because you hold the position of power, you have parents, you have VAs and all those. So I think that it is very wrong for them. They are discriminating and contravening. Uh, the, object, the objectives of Chapter 6, mm -hmm. economic, social, and political. Doc, others and I think it's time to sort these things out. Mm. Doc, others argue that you speak of a really ideal situation, but realistically, uh, they think it will be difficult for government to ignore the foot soldiers who played a role in getting them elected. What's your uh, reaction to that? <laughs> Actually, the reason why we are going around in circles and not breaking through, you know, the development barrier is that we think thinking ideal is not important. It should all be practiced. Practice. So that's why we can't clearly see the path to go. We are related. If you're ideal and you're conscious, you're conscious of the fact that once you were elected, the president came from your party and your party has a majority, you become the party of Ghana. You are no more the party of MPP. So pursue policies. And the constitution is clear. You don't discriminate. And now you are discriminating on the basis of party membership. It says you cannot discriminate, whether on the basis of creed or belief or ethnicity or region or what. And the parties have been doing this, but nobody's taking them up. Maybe, you know, in Ghana, because we don't want to think through things and find solutions, we rush to the Supreme Court with everything. Maybe it is time to do that as well. But I think fundamentally, it is wrong. They are in power using public resources. Uh, to solve problems that would bring relief to the greatest majority. So they should think along with the president. Mm -hmm. Because the president is conducting his business as president of Ghana, the party ought to step in line with him. Uh, but you cannot say if there are job opportunities, tell your foot soldiers, you are putting competent people in charge of positions so that they can work hard and create the greatest opportunities for everybody very quickly, and they would also benefit. Mm. After all, they are not paying more taxes than others. So what is the basis of the discrimination? All, all right, Doc. Apart from uh, condemning the act of these two executives uh, on media and in, in, in public space, yeah, what should... Media, so they shouldn't make statements like that. So what, w apart from condemning the act, what should we do to make sure that uh, th their plan doesn't come through from your governance perspective? This obviously is not right, according to you. Uh, so what should we do to stop them from going ahead with their plan and to put a stop to this uh, totally in the country? I, I think we should condemn it roundly, but they are also very reasonable people. I think they learn, and we should also educate. Okay, and I think they should educate their foot soldiers. It's not only the MPP that is doing it. We saw it under NDC when Professor Mills in 2009 took over, where KVIPs and all that. So it's always a tit for tat. But to forget that, the winning vote comes from people larger than their membership. And the responsibility they carry is towards the entirety of the country. Mm. They have to unite us. We found ourselves polarized and div divided. They have to improve our living conditions. They have to grow the economy to a double-digit rate so that we can create more wealth to develop the country and tackle the issues, the needs of everybody. Instead of doing that, this uh, My Party Council also results in putting people who are less qualified to hold positions and who cannot do the work they must do to grow the economy and provide efficient 
and inclusive public services to everybody. So Many, it is not good. Mm, uh, apologies, we have to end it here. Thank you very much for your no, time. I'm glad you ended it too. Thank you. Dr. Emmanuel Akwete is Executive Director of IDEC, sharing his thoughts there. Uh, away from that, poor roads in the Amantia West District of the Ashanti region uh, negatively affecting social and economic life. Residents at Agroyusum in particular say they are unable to transport their farm produce to market centers. They also say transporting the sick from the community to health facilities is a nightmare. They are appealing for help. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reports. Okay. Our Honorable MP and DC talked about a contract being awarded to start the construction of the road. We are appealing that Nananum and the authorities see to it that these contracts use modern, durable and quality materials to construct the road. There have been similar cases in this village where newly constructed buildings and other projects collapsed as a result of using poor materials. This is the deplorable state of the road. Residents on vehicles and motorbikes have to put in extra effort to get to the next town. I was praying that it rained today. If it had rained, this event would not have come out because the road is mostly in worse conditions during the rainy season. This makes access to health care difficult since the hospital is located here. Once the DC and MP are here, I put it forward to them. Please, come to our aid. So, what is the MP's response? Number one thing, a disturbing side hospital will pile the road from the junction. One of the most disturbing situations was the road leading to the hospital. But now, a contractor has been assigned to construct the road. We are waiting for this raining season to pass so work can begin. Well, that cannot be enough for the chiefs and residents. We will follow and monitor the activities of any contractor who will be awarded this contract by the MP to construct the road. Until this route is properly fixed, residents say their fate would continue to hang in the balance. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reporting. Okay. Now let's do this before we bring you business news. 200 victims of human trafficking have been rescued by the Ghana Immigration Service over a two-month period since a ban was placed on the immigration of Ghanaian nationals to the Gulf states for employment. The temporary ban was placed to put the brakes on the incidence of human trafficking that's been on the rise this year. Head of Migration Information Bureau of the Ghana Immigration Service, Chief Superintendent Maka Samoa Boache says the arrests are as a result of increased efforts by the service. The immigration has intercepted about almost 200 uh, potential victims of this because once you cannot go through the airport they were trying to go through our land borders vigilance is key as our motto tells us friendship with vigilance so once we knew that well, uh, well, if the ministry has banned people from going to Saudi or the Gulf states um, and people will have find a way of going around it so we also alerted our border post 
and then they are on high alert, and then it's yielded results, positive results, because for us, we need to rescue our people. For us, we need to intercept. For us, we don't need to look beyond looking why people go through uh, to go and suffer. Why not? It should be normalized. The facilitators, we have them, and then we are preparing them for uh, court. They are more than 10. We are processing them for court. Chief Superintendent Boache added measures are being put in place to streamline the whole process of Ghanaians seeking employment overseas. And for us to really uh, systematize the whole process, uh, in fact, I, I happen to be part of the team, the interagency committee that is helping to re redefine what's uh, foreign migration is, and uh, I, I believe that in, uh, sooner or later we'll come up with a systematic approach of who can be engaged uh, from Ghana to any part outside Ghana. That is quite critical because I think it was being done in a ha more haphazard way, and then it was about time we streamline it to enjoy the benefits mutually from both countries, by way of remittances, by way of helping families and households over here, by way of, I mean, exporting or bringing back um, skills that will help. So uh, we need to streamline. It's not, it should be a win-win scenario. So it's a temporary ban. You're watching Joy News today with me, Benis Abubedu. Any moment from now, we'll take you live to Parliament where Finance Minister Ken Oporiata is expected uh, to deliver or present the mid-year budget review. Uh, we know that uh, the Vice President is expected to uh, be in the House as well. And uh, my colleague on the ground, Joseph Fukugafu, says he supported uh, the Energy Minister and the Minister for Zongo and Inner City Development. Stay with us here on the Join You channel for more in Parliament. It's now time for business. Thanks for your company on this edition of Joy News today. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. Many thanks for your company once again. My name is Benis Abubedi.